Are you ready? I am ready. All right. I will start the clock when you say your first word. First word. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Beth. So, um, so my name is Will Anderson. I'm from Mechanical Engineering. I'm hoping to accomplish a few things here today. I'm hoping to be a good ambassador for the department. I'm hoping to generate some interest among the students for this fascinating, rich area of research. I'm also hoping to still be employed at the end of this event. So we'll see. Uh, so, so in the interest of establishing departmental superiority, this building that you see here is the Mechanical Engineering Building. So, you know. Um, so I, I, I really, this is a slide I, I always really like to show students because I think it's just a fantastic way to illustrate this, this all, the, all the opportunities, all the real opportunities and, and opportunities of the future for research in fluid mechanics. So what you see on the vertical axis is length scale, okay? And what you see on the horizontal axis is time scale. And, and so this is all log scale, otherwise this would never work. But by doing it this way, you can start to put different things all over the figure, and you can get this sense of how everything is interconnected. So look, if we just focus on the lengths for a moment, so 10 to the zero, that's a meter, that's kind of how big we are. So 10 to the negative three is a millimeter, 10 to the negative six is a micron, to the negative nine is a nanometer. Likewise, to the 10 to the three is a kilometer, and so on and so forth. And so you can start to kind of generate a mental, a mental picture for how big some things might be, like a little bit bigger than 10 to the six is the diameter of the Gulf of Mexico, and so on. And then you can do the same thing with the time scale. So again, this is log scale, so 10 to the zero is a second and so on to minutes, hours, days, and then you get to the very far edge where you get what, we, what, what are called Milankovitch cycles, which is what we think of as being climate change. And so then the next thing you can do is you can say, okay, well, if, if the vertical axis is, is like a length scale and the horizontal axis is like a time scale, you can say, okay, well then I could draw lines from the origin and the slope of those lines must be velocity. That's a, that's a pretty simple concept. I think even my bio and ECE colleagues would follow that. And, 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 so, and so what you could do then is you could, you could say, you can see then for yourself, it's self-evident that this must be the direction towards things that are faster, and this must be the directions to, a little, to, to, to things that are a little bit slower. And then you can start to put on some different processes in the atmosphere and, and in the ocean. So you've got cloud clusters, you know, cumulus convection, boundary layer turbulence, and micro turbulence, and and you can of course see the ocean is a bit faster than um, is a, is a bit slower than the atmosphere because the density is bigger, um, and then you can go down to even smaller things like here. This is the area where we have biofluids. This is just this little box at the bottom. Most people don't even think about it, and and then you can get to even smaller things. Um, in fact, you can get to things like, when we get to 10 to the negative six, we get to the scale of a micron, and that's, that's when uh, surface tension begins to affect transport. So, so this is just such a wonderful area for research. Uh, I, I hope you all enjoyed this. Uh, to the students, you know, we had a good time making fun of each other today, but the truth is we all have great respect for each other, and being a faculty on a university campus is a wonderful, wonderful professional thing to be doing. And uh, with that, I'll, I guess I'll stop a few minutes, uh, a few seconds early. Uh, thanks. Great, thank you.